Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Picket Fence Studios. Today I am going to be using my own set that I haven't even had a chance to use in a video yet. Um, this is Autumn Beautiful Bounty, Bountiful Bounty, I can't remember, I apologize. Um, and then these are new to Picket Fence. This is the, the Freckle Friends. The one on the left is Bella Boo and the one we're going to use today is Penelope Pumpkin. We obviously there's an alliteration theme, which is really cute. Um, so I enjoy doing illustrations and I enjoy scene cards, but I cannot draw the people. And so I'm super excited for this, um, this new like, uh, theme of stamps that they are releasing because now that means I can color all these cute little girls or people and put them in my scenes. So here I'm just going for a very general kind of background. I haven't really worked out in my head how I'm going to put it all together yet. Um, doing a little bit of salvaged patina for that blue that's going to fade down into the white. And then for the blue blue part, I am using Salty Ocean. And I'm just using my blending brushes for that. On the bottom for the green, normally I'm, I, I am more of a yellow green and that's still be the case for today, but normally I'm a bit brighter. But because this is a fall card, this is one of the first decisions that I'm making and really taking to, into account that it's for fall. And I am choosing to use one that's a little bit more desaturated. So I'm going with a crushed olive peeled paint combination versus a twisted citron and a mowed lawn, which are much brighter. They feel more summery. These tend to feel a little bit more like fall, like more like a jewel tone, uh, especially when you get like that deeper color. So here I am stamping out the wagon. There's two kinds of pumpkins that come in the um, autumn B Bountiful Beauty. Oh, I'm, I'm going to mess that up. You guys have to forgive me. Um, and so there's one that's just three and then there's one that is like six or seven. I can't even remember. There's a lot, like a whole load of pumpkins, a wagon just full of pumpkins. And so I wasn't sure which ones I was going to use or if I was going to use them both. So I am stamping both of them. And then I am stamping our little Penelope pumpkin, all using uh, Picket Fence Studios intense black ink. This is safe for alcohol markers and we are going to be coloring with our Copics today. So you can color with whatever medium you prefer. The color choices and, and shading won't change uh, just because the medium does. So before we get too far into this, I do want to mention um, that Picket Fence is actually having a sale right now. They're offering 10% off with the code AUTUMN10, and that is for all Halloween and fall products. So that means both of these are on sale right now. Um, and then in addition to that, they have very generously um, offered that they're going to do a um, stamp set and die for free Um with $50 orders. And so you can um, pop over to the website to see that it's like little jack-o'-lanterns and a witch hat and um, it's super cute. Well, I mean, it's like a spooky one, but it's, it would be good uh, for this time of year. Uh, and you get that if you spend uh, $50. So there's that. And that is good through October 31st that that sale is running uh, till then. So here, the game plan when I put the set together was to be able to do it with like florals or um, pumpkins or to be able to use them on their own. Um, because you guys know when I'm drawing my sets, it's really, really important to me that the images are versatile. And so here I decided that I was going to do like a more traditional red wagon, even though it's a wood wagon. Um, this is very similar to actually the one that we have. And the one that we have is painted red and it came from um, a friend of my husband's family's. He actually built it for his grandkids and then it kind of got passed along and along. And now um, they got passed to them because they didn't have any little ones anymore. And, and so now it's ours. Um, and we still do have the littles. So I'm going to do this red. For the shading here, I'm really just kind of adding um, some shading where I see the lines. Uh, and then to the uh, the slats that are behind, those would have darker shading. And then for like kind of a center highlight, I'm just adding shading to the left and the right sides of the longer slats. Now, here, with like those little slats that run behind, did you see? I'm the per. Okay, so this is my own illustration. I drew this from scratch and I still colored it wrong. 
<laughs> so if you look behind that wheel, I got overzealous and started filling in that portion of the wheel red when it should not have been. That was not part of the post. Did I go back and change it? No, ma'am. No, sir. I did not because I didn't think anybody would notice. Um, and ultimately, I don't think you really do once the scene is all put together. So I'm fine with it. But so here, once I have my darkest color down and all of my shadows, I'm going to go over that with my mid-tone and kind of blend out, um, you know, extending past that. For the slats that are behind, I finished filling them in. That's not a lot of real estate there. Um, and then I will go over um, the mid-tone with my lightest color that's kind of reserved for the highlight of the slats that are... Um, on top, these real, these longer ones that make up the side. So, and we saw we did the browns for the wheels and the gray for the little handle. For my pumpkins, I have always done a variety of different colors for my pumpkins, and especially for the one, the larger one, um, that has several different, I didn't want it to be the same color on top of the same color. So with oranges, um, you know, orange is a very, so we have red, which is obviously a fall color. We have orange, which is definitely, definitely a fall color. Um, and so I chose to do that variety. You can use a brown as your darkest color and in E in the Copic families um, to, you know, add a little bit more of a natural shadow to your pumpkins. You can do them all orange. That's what I'm doing with this one. I'm starting with a dark orange and then working out to a very, very light, um, almost like a yellow orange. Um, for the other ones, I am going to go even um, even more to the red side, you know, because oranges can be a red orange or a yellow orange. So in those cases, my darkest color is actually going to be an R29, which is the mid-tone that we used for the wagon. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can take oranges and really break them up, especially when you have them kind of like in a grouping like this, which I, I do think is pretty popular this time of year. Um, so that, that that way they're just a little broken up. They all look a little bit different. Alternatively, you know, you see, we just went and uh, did a pumpkin. Well, it wasn't really a pumpkin patch. I, how would I describe it? It was a, it was a farm, um, but honestly, it probably saved us. I, I, I don't mean for it to sound like I was complaining, but like they had all the pumpkins in one area and the kids could just go in there and, and pick the pumpkins. Whereas the one that we used to go to, um, you would have to go like out into the field and like get them off the vine. Um, honestly, it probably was easier that they had pre-picked them. Um, but then there's kind of a little funny story with that. So I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, but anyway, so, you know, when you're, when you're doing your pumpkins, don't be afraid to kind of like try them out and try a several different colors. So now we're doing this fall scene, right? We have a blue sky. We have more of a desaturated kind of green grass. We've got the red and the orange. But when we are putting a whole scene together, you know, we want our um, imagery to work really nicely together. It, and we want everything to look as if it goes and it's cohesive. And so one of the ways that we can do that is repeating those same colors. But also, <laughs> not just repeating those same colors, but also knowing what is going to complement it. And if you look on the color wheel, a complementary color is just, they're across from each other on the color wheel. So like red's complement is green, orange's complement is blue. And since we are more into these fall shades, when I go to color my girl, I am going to repeat those same orange colors. Um, but I'm going to color her dress blue because that's going to help bring her forward with her accessories being orange and her little jumper skirt, overall skirt. Is it a jumper? I think you call that a jumper. Not 100% positive. Um, adorable. That I am sure of. But that way she will really pop amongst all those kind of warmer colors because she'll have that contrast with that cool blue and the contrast with the complementary color of the orange. So like all of these colors that we've already used down below, you know, we know, okay, we're, we have to color the pumpkins orange. You don't have to. There's like teal ones and stuff like that. But 
you get what I'm saying. For the most part, pumpkins are orange. So I know I have to repeat that color. I've colored my wagon red. That one, that'll probably be a good repeat as well. I use the same browns in her hair as I did for the wheels and then later on for the trees. So those are going to be all repeating and really nice and cohesive. Um, for the shading, I, we don't, I don't color a lot of people. I used to, but not so much anymore. We're, we're going to bring that back with the freckle friends, I think. Um, so here with the the skin tone her hair she's got like these little curtain bangs that are going to go over her face so that's going to cast a shadow her arms are kind of tucked behind her poofy little skirt her knees are just the way she's standing they're kind of bent in so that her skirt will cast a shadow on her legs and then i also added a little bit of shadow where her kneecaps would be and where her um, legs are going into her boots i am going to give her just a little tiny little pink cheek here with an r20 because it's fall. Maybe there's a little bit of a breeze. Um, I can tell you the other day there was no breeze. There was no breeze when we were out there picking pumpkins. I dressed for fall in like little boots and some jeans and a sweater and y'all I was sweating. Like my poor husband was in a t-shirt and a flannel and I'm like if I'm sweating he's I mean, he's got to be so uncomfortable. But again, how can I complain? I live in Ohio and it's October and it was like a 70 some degree day. Like how, I don't know. It's an Indian summer. It's beautiful and I am grateful. I just should have dressed smarter. Um, so anywho, with the hair, again, I'm repeating those brown colors and I'm going in with my darkest color first. I'm not putting a ton of dark in the hair that's framing her face because those pieces are on top. Her bangs are on top. Those little side fringe pieces are on top, but we will have more darkness in the hair that's behind her body, behind her neck. That's definitely going to have more shadow. Um, on this right-hand side, it, the, the area that's behind her scarf will have a little bit more shadow um, or anything that's kind of falling behind itself. You know, those, those pieces that you see that are kind of flowing out and behind, we would want to add a shadow to those as well. Another really way, an easy way to figure out where to add your shadows is to look just like we did with the wagon, to look and see where the illustrator put the lines at. Um, that's a really good way to just keep that same shape because you don't want your strokes to be going in a different direction than the lines in the stamp. It's going to look disjointed and not natural. So you do want to pay attention to the areas, you know, where there, those illustration lines are and make sure you're following kind of the same direction. So once we get out to the lightest color, we're just all going over everything. If you find, which I did, that the lightest color kind of removed some of my darkness and I didn't really have as much dimension as I wanted, you can always go back in with your darker color. For her little hat, I think that you could actually color this as like an acorn or a pumpkin. I do think you could go either way, but I did go with a pumpkin and I chose to go with the more kind of like rust colored orange um, because I, I really liked that. I thought it would look nice with that desaturated kind of blue. So where the sections of the pumpkins are meeting, we're going to add shadow. We always add shadow where two places meet or where one object lays on top of the other. And then I'm also, if you can see, I'm rounding out my flicks because the object is round. So rounding out those strokes is going to help give it more shape. For her little t-shirt under her jumper, I went ahead and colored it that same orange as well. And I'm going to get her little galoshes with the same orange color. Um, what are they called? Wellies? Is that a brand? I don't know. Uh, but they're cute. They're like little fall boots. Um, but so I am doing the uh, shadow on the outside as if there was kind of like some light that was hitting kind of directly in the middle. Um, and then I'll just use, you know, add my lightest color for the highlight on the side of the boot, but then also onto the toe of the boot as well, um, because they would be catching quite a bit of light there. For, um, oh, the little top of the pumpkin and her little bag, I went again with the same neutrals of the brown. I love when stamps have little accessories like this, like the scarf and the bag. It really gives us the opportunity 
to kind of play around and make it our own. We could, you know, add patterns to that. Or if you're a person who loves like paper piecing, um, you know, you could stamp it and trim those out. So you could use your pattern paper to give her, you know, a fun little pattern purse or a dress. That would be super sweet. Um, so once that's done, colored, then we're going to move on to that jumper, that blue that I told you about. Monochromatic is really nice, but there is something to be said about complementary colors. They just work so well together, and especially if you're keeping them kind of in the same um, tone, like with the same level of brightness or darkness. Um, so here for the pleats of her dress for the flare of her skirt, I'm looking to see which one lays on top of the other. And usually you can tell that um, by just looking at how the lines are drawn. And wherever one is on top of the other, I want to add the shadow to the one that is below. So the only time that there isn't one that it's very obvious which one lays on top is this this one right there in the middle. Um, and for that one, I just did a little triangle. And because we added the triangle, it will create its own pleat in that open area. And we don't really have to worry about it. So as we move out to the mid-tone, we are going to start kind of bringing in some of that color down from the top as well into the areas that are lightest. Um, so that way we are having just a sliver left of our lightest color. And this is going to give our dress a ton of dimension um, because we have kind of like those pleats and folds in it. I love the way that the blue looks with the, that rusty orange color. So for her scarf, I did decide to do a pattern. That's something that's really fun that you can add. I chose to color it a neutral color. So I'm using the same cool grays that I used in the handle for the wagon. I'm adding the shadows kind of using that same triangle where there was not a pleat at the bottom of the scarf. I'm adding that little triangle to give it some shape. And then, um, you know, where the scarf is laying over. I'm doing a plaid here. That sounds like it would be hard, but really it's not. So I'm using... Um, one of the reddish browns. No, that one was the red, the true red, the of the R59. So I'm using a red to do some um, vertical stripes. Same thing with the green. And then I'm going to go in with that reddish brown and do the um, horizontal stripes. And this is going to create that plaid for us. And it still looks like it has great dimension, just like the rest of her outfit, because we colored it with the gray to begin with. So that's all of the coloring. So we're going to go ahead and die cut these out with their coordinating dies. If you are a person who does not like to do scenes with dies and you prefer to just do masking, I totally get that. You could still create this scene. You would just have to do your masking first and leave those masks in place while you did your ink blending. So here... Now that I have my little people cover or colored, um, I can figure out how I want my scene to go. And I decided that I was really going to keep it pretty simple because I do have a lot of imagery going on uh, with the actual stamped images that I've die cut out. So I'm really just going to put in like these two trees and a couple of little leaves. Um, I did put in some bushes and I will show you that, but you won't actually be able to see them in the finished card. So when I'm doing trees, when I'm just winging it out here freehand, I do like to only show a portion of them. So I find that I have much more success and I am much more comfortable if I do them kind of off the edges, framing the card. And you can see I also gave them a little bit of a curve, like how you would see a tree trunk, um, you know, it's thicker at its base where its roots are going down into the ground and then it kind of thins out and then the branches come out at the top. We want to mimic that. So that's how I draw them. And I always draw them with my lightest color first because it's easier to cover up if I made a mistake. Once I'm happy with how they are looking, then I can go in with the darker color, start adding some shadows, um, start adding a little bit of shape to like the bark to help give it some dimension. So I do it with the darkest color, extend it out with my mid-tone, and then I will fill them in with my lightest color. 
Again, these are going to, I chose the E55 family, which is the same one that I used for the wheels and her hair. It is traditionally on the warmer side, but because we're coloring right over that blue ink blending, it does look a bit cooler. Um, not so much so that it doesn't look brown. It just looks like a cooler brown. And honestly, I'm fine with that. So now once I have my trees in place, I'm going to go in and do a little bit of the bushes. This is me just holding my um, Copic marker just a little bit more vertical, not vertical, horizontal, um, so that that way I can kind of tap it in there to create some bushes. And again, until I know what, you know, what shape I'm going with, I start with my lightest color and then I can add in some shadows working out for a mid-tone and then to the darkest color. Like I said before, I wanted to show you that this is something that you can use in the background because maybe you just have Penelope and you want to put her, you know, like walking through the woods in fall and you don't want to do the wagon and the pumpkin. Like these bushes would help give your um, scene a little bit more life. So now I'm laying them out so that way I can see how it's going to look. And then here doing the same thing with my marker, holding it a little bit more horizontally and doing little taps for little leaf shapes. I'm going to give the illusion of leaves that are, you know, kind of connected to these trees and we're just barely seeing the bottom of the foliage. So I started with the same green that I'm going to use for the grass that we also, um, used what do we use the green for no just for the grass yeah you haven't seen it yet but we're going to use it for the grass <laughs> um oh no the the leaves on the pumpkins i was gonna say i knew i did and then i used the yellow orange from the pumpkins as well as the reddish brown and then just tap those in there so we have like a little bit of coverage here i've put a little bit of glue on the back of my wagon just enough to pick up my little pumpkins and now i can go in i know that this is going to hang off my card i'm fine with that i can go ahead and glue this down flat um, and then i will trim off the excess pumpkin i wanted it to look like you know she had just gone and picked her pumpkins and now she's kind of like carrying them in her wagon on her way home home is the little story I told myself in my head. I like to blend my die cuts into my scene. That's not for everybody, but if you are a person who's interested in doing that, that is how I choose to do it so that I don't have to do as much masking. I can use the die cuts and just blend them in. So I just go through, and this is a YG03. It's matching my... Um, my grass in my ink blended grass pretty well i'm going to switch to a yg01 where it gets lighter you and then for inside the wagon because like obviously it's a slatted you know it's a wood slat wagon you'd be able to see inside of it i am going to go for some browns kind of on the you know open areas except for where the pumpkins would be kind of like seated in there I am going to add some orange there and this is just going to help it look like you know the wagon has like a brown floor and or maybe there's you know some other items you know that are in the wagon that the pumpkins are sitting on top of um so I, I did tell you that I would tell you the um the the funny story about the pumpkins um so we typically go like to one place and then the other. And the um, this time when we went, it was a new place and it had lots of different fun stuff to do. But the funny thing, like the haha thing about the pumpkins was they do a um, like as many as you can lift for $10, which is way different than the other place Um because they do it by the pound. But I was like, as many as you can lift. So can I just tell y'all how many dads were out there? <laughs> how many dads were out there just trying to lift these pumpkins? Thankfully, we only needed four. And my wonderful husband was able to scoop up all four of them. And at the end of your lift, like you can't be holding any of them by their handle, like by the tops, by the stems. You have to have all of them in your arms. Um, so fortunately, like I said, there's only four of us. Uh, my mom did go, but she did not want a pumpkin. Um, 
but then he only had to do four of them. Uh, but of course, you know, the kids aren't paying attention to if there's mud on them when they're picking them or how big they are and dad's going to have to lift them up or all of that. So he did have to get down there and kind of, you know, figure out a way to get like nobody could hand them to you, like stack them for you either. So you had to not only lift them, but you had to get them all up there and then get up off the ground, which is a lot of ab work. I got to tell you, I don't know if I would be able to do it. Um, but he did manage to get them all up there. I did take a video of it because I thought that it was very entertaining. Um, but I thought, well, that's kind of like a fun little thing to do. Um, you know, like a little bit different way uh, for picking your, you know, getting your pumpkin pricing um, a little bit more interactive. I thought it was cute. Anyway, okay, so here is the greens. I am adding a little bit of a shadow under the wheels and then underneath the wagon as well because it would cast a shadow below. And then for her, just to ground her, I'm adding a little shadow there as well, working all the way out to my lightest color. And now I'm going to go back in and add some texture. So for the um, grass, I do typically like to start with my darkest color because, just like we talked about before, with alcohol markers being transparent, when you go over the darker colors with the lighter colors, it can remove it some. And in cases like this, where we're creating lots of grasses just by doing lots of little flicks um, to build up that texture, it can give you several variations of color that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have. Um, so that is why I prefer to do that. I did speed this up. I do not flick markers this fast. This is This part is definitely sped up. But then, so now we have everything kind of framed really nicely. I did use the sentiment from Autumn Bountiful Beauty. Um, and there's several in there for, uh, you know, Thanksgiving and things like that. But this one you could do, hey there, pumpkin, or you're the sweetest pumpkin. And I thought that one was way cuter because she's so sweet. She's so adorable. Um, so I did, you're the sweetest pumpkin, and it fits perfectly in our little tree frame, uh, which I love. And I do stamp, I did stamp them twice because I um, just, I don't think that I had, ink. maybe I need to re-ink my ink pad, but I didn't think I had great coverage the first time around. Uh, so then I did add some shimmer to like her little hat, her shoes, and the pumpkins. I also added white highlights to the wheels, the pumpkins, her little hat, her closure for her purse and her shoes. And then that's it. That's our whole fall scene card. So if you have any questions, by all means, please leave them below. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you will check out that um, sale from Picket Fence. Like I said, it's until October 31st. Thank you guys so much for your time and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.